Hello everyone. This is R. Partha Sarathi. I am working as an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering in Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. So now we discuss about introduction to seismic behavior and codal provisions. It is related to structural dynamics and earthquake engineering. Let's we move to the presentation. So an introduction part. A sudden shaking or the movement of earth crust caused due to disturbance. So the occurring of inside of earth. So only we consider seismic loads into the of our structure calculations. So the earth is disturbed, vibrations are produced. So for avoiding this kind of additional pressures to the foot dig, we can add the additional seismic forces to our structure for analysis and design and detailing. So vibrations set out all the directions from the origins. The vibrations are more intense near to the sources. So as the distance of increases become the slowly to spread out. So this is the structure of earth. So a structure of earth is included by the inner core and outer core and mantle and crust. So these are the structure of earth. So in the structure, a shallow of mantle and uh, mid ocean of ridges and crust and lithosphere and to the of a few uh, depths uh, from the uh, 0 to 460 to 2700 or 2700 to 2890, 5150. So these are all the depth of uh, inner core, outer core, and traditional regions. So these considerations for the earthquake resistant design, the earthquake resistant construction, a good structural configuration, and lateral strength of the structure, ductility of structure, deformability, and damageability. So as per the Indian standard code provisions, the earthquake resistant structures, we refer a few code books, IS 1893 part 1 2016 version, revised year. So this code says Indian standard criteria for earthquake resistant design of structures. In code provision number 2, IS 4326 so this is the Indian standard uh, for code practice of earthquake resistant design and construction of building. IS 1913827-1993 Indian standard code guidelines for improving earthquake resistance of earthen building. So IS 1382819993. So this is the code book for uh, Indian standard guidelines for improving earthquake resistance of low strength of masonry building. IS 13920. 2016. So this is a code practice for ductile detailing for reinforced concrete seismic structures. So in some of the zoning conditions, the earthquake of a, a building as per the Indian standard, the possibility of a structures in zone number two, three, four, five. So these are the zones in our country. So zone number two, very low risk area. Zone number three, moderate risk area. In zone number four, very high risk. Zone number five is also very high risk. So in that seismic zone factor, we call as per the design criteria, it is that class 6.4.2, a seismic zone factor 1, 2, 5. The values are 0 0.10, 0 0.16 and 0 0.23, 0 0.36. So these are the seismic zone factor values. So, so these are the uh, Indian uh, seismic zone with uh, deviated color. Zone number two, two, zone number five. Five is the high risk area. We can uh, choose the seismic zone number five in lead color. So in earthquake resistant buildings, for the planning approach, few points in the planning stage, we consider a simplicity and regularity, like a shape of the building, a simple rectangular plane. Simple shape of building behavior better during earthquake resistant complex. The shapes are like a L, E, E, and U. The separation of a large building into smaller blocks can lead to symmetry and regularity. The size of building also we consider the length of the building should not be more than three times of width. We can maintain if the longer length are needed, two separate blocks we can add to the separation of buildings to be provided. So some of the planning, okay, we consider a planning stage, square and rectangle. That's better. 
and symmetrical desirable plan in rectangular with the dot opening and i shaped building with a small i projection and longer length length is always greater than the three times of breadth so b means it's a breadth of building i mean it is a length of building you can see this cursor and the uh, unsymmetrical of uh, section and uh, i section with long projection and u shaped projections okay these are all the uh, planning some of the so in the construction methods and measures for improving mass laying walls so provide horizontal reinforcement so uh, horizontal reinforcements are called as a we provide in ring beam or horizontal band we call it split beam so whether the horizontal reinforcements are provided in the lidal beam and blith beam roof band and uh, a gable band okay double bars and vertical bars so these are all the additional reinforcements we provide to strengthening the masonry wall structures like it's a load bearing structures and uh, a longitudinal reinforcements as per the class uh, 13920 okay a code recommendations the anchorage zone length class per 6.2.5 the anchorage length in this case the longitudinal of uh, reinforcements in the beam shall given below we provide a b shall be at least of a 12 mm diameter bars each top and bottom okay this is the minimum of the size we provide a reinforcement to the column and beam also the minimum longitudinal steel reinforcements the p minimum is required to face at any section like uh, pro minimum is equal to 0.24 that is the root of fck by fy so here fck is a concrete strength fy is the yield strength of a steel reinforcements so here it is a, a splicing uh, like a longitudinal reinforcements as per the codal provisions a lap splices like a, a ties we call is a stirrups also so when adopted for the closed links uh, shall be provided over the entire length of the beam member so a spacing that the link shall not be exceeded 140 so it's as per a, a code recommendation we cannot uh, add more than of a 150 mm of spacing to the upper this time and the lapping of uh, length shall not be less than developing of length like a largest longitudinal reinforcement bars in the tension member a lap splices within the of joints and with the distance of two times of dia in the face of the column and within the quarter length of the beam joining a location whether the fracture and yielding may occur under a thick cake of loading condition not more than 50 percentage of the area steel bars on the either top and bottom of the faces shall be Placed at any of one sections. So here, a uh, few diagram uh, like a lapping length provided to increasing the uh, span of the uh, beam to the one uh, end to another end. So longitudinal bar in the beam section. So definitely we provide a yeah, four number of reinforcements in the beam. In the two number is the top fiber, and two numbers in the bottom fiber. Like uh, already uh, we told that. Uh, the top fiber is called as a compression member and bottom fiber is called as a tension member and uh, for that uh, in support sections we can maximum of uh, um, spacing of uh, uh, stirrups we maintain and mid span section we can minimizing the uh, spacing of stirrups because of uh, in mid span of the beam will be deformed so for avoiding the deformation deflections we provide the minimum spacing of stirrups the next one is a uh, details of uh, transverse reinforcement as per the codal provisions the ductile detailing we can maintain a hoop uh, spacing that is a uh, greater than r not equal to d by 2 so hoop spacing is a uh, less than always d by 4 other d b is equal to r under demo we can maintain so in 50 mm of a uh, maximum of uh, spacing to the upper support section and uh, two mi minimum of a uh, two bars for the full length along the top and bottom but uh, we can um, provide a uh, minimum four number Okay, but uh, it depends upon the load condition, number of load, soil test, uh, all the other load calculations. We provide uh, additional crank reinforcements in the support sections as per the recent considerations, as per that analysis. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Thank you.